The assumption here in this picture can be summarized with this picture. Essentially, there is, we have the climate system that have some mechanism. Then we have essentially two drivers. One is uh, the sun that is uh, affecting the, the climate, and the other one is uh, human activity. Human activity is, uh, are the only one that can change, can change greenhouse gas forcing, can change the uh, aerosol, can change the albedo. So everything, uh, everything uh, is, uh, is essentially produced by humans here. Without the humans, without the humans, these things would be constant. Okay, this was the assumption made by, and these are what the models used the IPCC are doing. However, if we look at the very uh, uh, big data sets, so here we have 400,000 um, um, records about uh, CO2, about uh, methane, about the temperature and so on. So this is the, temp the data from 400,000 years uh, on, on, on the Earth, what it is seen is that we have uh, uh, clear cycles in the temperature, big cycles, these are the glacial epochs, and then we have some warming period, we are here, so this is the, uh, the total time, so we have a warming period, and in associated with this large cycle of the temperature, we have large cycles in the CO2, okay? So it is evident that these cycles could not be caused by humans. There were no humans during this period. We are talking 400,000 years ago. Okay, humans uh, is here, are here. So, so it's evident. Now, these cycles were not caused by this cycle, but were caused by what? By, were, were caused by what is known as the Milakovitch cycles. That are cycles in the eccentricity of the Earth orbit. Okay, so the orbit is not fixed. It changes a little bit the eccentricity along the time. As you see here, this warming corresponds to this peak. This warming corresponds to this peak. This warming 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 to this peak. There is a perfect matching between these uh, Milankovitch cycles and, uh, and the period of, of, the, of the oscillation. So the temperature here is, is essentially driven by this astronomical forcing. And, uh, and then it happened that uh, the quantum system, for some reason, changes the greenhouse gases. Okay? So the real things, the, the real topology of the system might be something like this, where the climate is forced by changes in all these things, but it is not only humans, but also the climate system itself that might change, might change the concentration of, this, of the chemistry of the climate. And because uh, the climate system responds to the sun, the sun too might eventually partially shape the change of these, uh, of, of these uh, uh, elements. Okay? So the real topology of climate is that greenhouse gases might be changed not only by humans, but, but also by the solar activity, by also some, uh, some volcano, and so on. Therefore, the topology used by the IPCC, so the picture that I showed you at the beginning, by calling any change that we observe uh, in nature, uh, except the sun, by assuming that any change that we observe in nature is anthropogenic, is a little bit biased. Because perhaps part of this CO2 increased because of the increase of the solar activity, and so on. So, from a qualitative point of view, uh, this uh, structure is, uh, is a little, is, appears biased, appears biased toward the anthropogenic uh, influence of climate. From a quantitative point of view, if, uh, if we prove that uh, these lines here, this feedback, are small, so we can neglect it. So who okay. cares? But uh, if they are significant, that is a different story, right? So if this feedback back uh, are important, if uh, this additional uh, solar climate link are important and so on, we cannot really believe to what the IPCC is using because they are using a wrong topology of the climate system. It's something that is too much biased toward the, um, the human, the, the anthropogenic influence and, and, and underestimated the natural uh, effect on climate. Okay, so. Um, so let us go in details, because to understand which topology is the correct one, we need to go in details. It is not sufficient to, to have a qualitative uh, discussion. Now, if we look at the history of climate change, 
what we see is that uh, so, so for this curve here is uh, a, a curve associated with the carbon 14. This curve is, uh, is one of the proxy of the solar activity. Essentially, here the sun is low, here the sun is high, low, high, low, low, high, and so on. Okay? So there is this change in solar activity. If we compare this curve with the human history, what we observe is that during the warm period, so the, the, the period of high solar activity, there is the development of some big civilization. So for example, we have uh, the Roman maximum during this period, we have the Middle Ever maximum during this period, and so on. We have other periods and pyramids uh, appear during this period, and so on. Instead, during the period of low solar activity, so some civilization collapsed. So for example, the Maya collapsed during this uh, minimum of solar activity. Uh, the, the, in Peru, the Machu Picchu collapsed during this period. Also the Greek had the minimum during this period, and so on. So if we look to this other picture here, so these are 1,000 here. So this is the, the, uh, the climate in, 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 in Greece. In, in, the severity or the winter severity in London and Paris, you see here that there is a change of the climate during the last 1,000 years. And this change of the climate fits quite well, well the red curve, that is the C14 record, that is a proxy for the solar activity. So the solar activity was relatively high during the Middle Age, and the temperature was high. The solar activity was relatively low during the Little Ice Age, so this is the modern minimum. And the temperature was relatively low. And the, so you see that there is a very good correlation between the two records that suggests that at least in the past, the sun is the major driver. So humans, of course, do not contribute to this climate change. The sun is essentially the major driver of climate change. Okay, okay. So if we analyze carefully uh, um, this movement, so this is the distance of the sun from the center of the solar system, you see that there are these oscillations. There are these large oscillations in the moon. If we study the velocity of the sun, there are these large oscillations. Then there are also these uh, other oscillations. There are many oscillations that are associated with the movement of, of the sun. The funny things that I found is this one. If we compare the power spectrum of the temperature of the Earth, and we compare the power spectrum taken from the velocity of the sun around the solar system, you see that, uh, that it's, it seems that there is a strange correspondence here. This peak corresponds to this peak. This peak corresponds to this peak. This peak corresponds to this peak. And they go on. Even faster peak at a, at a higher frequency, they correspond quite well. They corres there is a very, very good correspondence between this peak uh, and, the, and the peaks of the frequency observed in the temperature. So what is it? Is it a coincidence? Or there is something more than a coincidence? So if so this is a picture that I plot. So I take the temperature data, this are temperature data, I take off this uh, trend fit with a quadratic fit. So I take off this trend. And what appears is this cycle, okay? That is a 60-year cycle. So this cycle indeed is found very clearly in the uh, um, Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. This is the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. You see a very, very clear 60-year cycle. The black line that is here, this black line that I plot here, is uh, is uh, uh, this line here. Is this line here. Instead, uh, uh, so, so you see that there is a very good match between this 60 year side oscillation that we find in the ocean and we find in the temperature once the trend of the, and, and this uh, 60 year cycle that we see in the planets. So this is associated with Jupiter and Saturn orbit. If we filter the data, we take the 20 year oscillation of the data, so we focus on this data, okay? We focus, you see that there is a very good correspondence. So, uh, Again, there is a very good correspondence between the gray line is uh, the filtering from the temperature, and the black line is the velocity is this curve. Is this curve here? What's this sort of velocity? Uh, the velocity, uh, the sun is moving around the, the central. So, it's the speed of the sun. Yeah, it's the speed of the. Of the uh, uh, so you see that there is an incredible good matching between the two curves. There is no no shift. Uh, it's exactly matched quite well. And so, with this analysis, I can use this and this to predict the time in the future, because it seems that it reproduces for 150 years, I match exactly the big oscillation. And if I do this, I get this black curve. This black curve is just the sum of the two solar oscillations, plus the trend, the, the fit, the quadratic fit. And you see that there is an incredible matching 
between the, my uh, reconstruction and the data. This, this matching is incredible because you see here, here the data looks almost constant and the, the, the predictions say constant. Then the data went up and the predictions say up. Then the data was down and the predictions say down. Then it was almost stable here and the predictions say then it was down and it was down. Then it was up and it was up. Then more, more or less constant. Mm -hmm. Then I had a big increase during this period and you see this big increase in, in the reconstruction. Then it went down significantly and the temperature went down. Constant. Down again, suddenly down. And, and there was down. Then up, very fast up. It goes up very fast. The temperature remained constant here, more or less. And the, the prediction say constant. Then there was a huge new increase of the temperature. And, and, and the model predicted. Now it predicts a cooling since 92, uh, sorry, since 2002, predicts a cooling. And we found this cooling. And what next? So I believe that something next will be something here. 